When it comes to second acts in life, there are few more remarkable than the one author Lee Child has written for himself. When you look at yourself now, world famous mystery writer, what were the odds that it was going to happen? What were the odds? Well, my dad, I remember him, uh, when I lost my job, he said, what are you going to do? And I said, I'm going to write a book. And he said, I'll lay you 10,000 to one, it won't work. And I guess that's pretty accurate, 10,000 to one probably. While his face may not be familiar, if you've been in a bookstore any time in the past decade or so, chances are you've at least glanced at one of these. Because Lee Child is one of the hottest mystery writers around, his books jump straight to the bestseller list. His 15 high-octane thrillers have sold more than 40 million copies in 75 countries, translated into 38 languages. There you go. <laughs> All right. Just a few days ago in New York City, crowds lined up to meet Child and buy his latest book, Worth Dying For. Thanks so much. So, Lee, what kind of people are here? Well, we've got about 1,600 people who are uh, writers, readers, publishers, editors, agents. At a mystery writers convention in San Francisco earlier this month, the lean, affable Englishman enjoyed rock star status. Thank you so much. I love uh, your so books. I love Jack Reacher. Big surprise, right? I read Thank everything you. you've written. Love them all. They go, oh my God, you're in <laughs> Lee Child's book. Are, are you the one? <laughs> it's an astonishing success story, made even more amazing by the fact that, but for a simple twist of fate, Lee Child may never have been born. You, your real name is Jim Grant. You change your name to Lee Child as, as an author. You're shedding one identity, assuming another, a yep. rebirth of a career. Yeah, it was like that. Jim Grant was born in England in 1954, the son of a civil servant. They had no money for luxuries, but fortunately for me, they didn't think of books as luxuries. You know, they were that kind of family, that kind of generation that really revered education. That education paid off. He got a job in British television and for 18 years worked behind the scenes on such highbrow, high-profile projects as Brideshead Revisited and mysteries like Prime Suspect. Pity you released him. You could have had him for three more days. I'll have him back inside, and when I do, he's going to stay inside. No more loopholes this time. And I was these guys on the other side of the camera, and it was a great job. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. And if I hadn't been fired, I would still be doing it and still loving it. But I was fired. Suddenly, without a job at age 40, with a wife and young daughter to support, he made a leap of literary faith. And I thought, well, you know, I know the audience. I know how people think. I know what they want. Um, let's try writing a book. So he sat down at his kitchen table with nothing more than a legal pad and this now well-worn pencil. In five months, Jim Grant, reborn as Lee Child, wrote his first novel. I was arrested in Eno's diner at 12 o'clock. I was eating eggs and drinking coffee. A late breakfast, not lunch. I was wet and tired after a long walk in heavy rain, all the way from the highway to the edge of town. So that's the first line, I was arrested in Eno's diner, and the reader thinks, well, why? Who are you? Why were you arrested? Where is Eno's diner? What's going on? And those questions are what propels the book th through the narrative. Killing Floor, set in the United States, earned rave reviews and introduced Child's signature character, a six foot five inch tall, 250-pound ex-U.S. military policeman named Jack Reacher. As you've described him in the book, he's a, he's, he's a, he's a rock. Yeah, he's a big guy and no vulnerability. He, he is who he is. He's confident. So he's got the mental strength. He's got the physical strength. He's a force. In other words, he's the hammer. He's not likely to be the nail. Go ahead. Make my day. Like Dirty Harry, and Philip Marlowe. Maybe you need this. Reacher is the latest incarnation of the noble loner. Strong, silent types who drift into trouble, righting wrongs along the way. 
Reacher is 100% confident. He walks into those situations, three bad guys, six bad guys, yeah. whatever. He knows they're going to lose. Yeah. You know, it's, it's simply a question of are they going to be limping for a week <laughs> or are they going to be in a wheelchair the rest yeah. of their life? In the hands of this master craftsman, Jack Reacher has become that rare literary creation. A character so well drawn, he's inspired a cult following. Go Reacher, go Reacher, go Reacher. Self-proclaimed Reacher creatures. Thank you for writing. At the Mystery Writers Convention, they were out in force. So what do they like about Reacher? Oh gosh. <laughs> Well, since this is my husband, <laughs> I have to be careful what yeah. I say. <laughs> you can't help but love Reacher because he's the white knight that we all want. And if you want to see what Jack Reacher might actually look like... Have you cast your vote? My vote goes to you. Take a look at 6 foot 4 inch, 230 pound Duncan Monroe of Australia. Duncan Monroe is... He recently won a Reacher look-alike contest. I'm absolutely uh, overwhelmed. I can't wait to uh, exercise these bragging rights back in Australia. In this pristine New York City apartment, Child is already hard at work on Reacher's next adventure. Coffee and cigarettes close at hand. We stood under the glow of a yellow vapor light. The air was He's living cold. proof you can author whatever life you choose. Only in places because in the end, it's all a mystery. Queer. They'll beat you to death. I doubt it, I said. What are you going to do when those clothes get dirty? 